be sure to follow our podcast on these available platforms. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Nocturnal Movie Cup. We are joined by our first guest, Oli Haskavi. Oh, Oli, welcome to the show. Falcon Thank you for having Soldier. me. It's been so amazing. Um, I mean, we're glued to our seats watching it every Friday. Um, me too. Talk about, I mean, right? It's so freaking good. Um, talk about that initial call where you're like, all right, is this a Marvel project? What is this? Because I know that everything's done in secret. So what was that first call like? Everything is super secretive. You're right. I did know it was a Marvel project. I got okay. an I got an email from my agent that said, you have an audition to put yourself on tape for, I think it was called Untitled Marvel Project number four or five or something. Mm. And it wasn't going into a casting director's office. It was just to make a tape and send it in. And, you know, oftentimes when it's a very secretive project, if you're going into a casting director's office, they'll tell you a little bit about it. They may, they may tell you the tone a little bit. You might get a sort of, I know I'm not supposed to say anything, but just to help you out, here are some details. But because I was taping myself in this apartment that you see behind me, um, it was completely blind. The role didn't have a name. The other characters in the scene had fake names. It was similar to the scene we ended up shooting, but just with no identifying details and no nothing that I could go research or look up or anything. And so... I was flying pretty blind. I made a tape, I sent it off. I didn't have a ton of time for some reason. I can't remember why, it might've just been a tight deadline. And um, I made a tape and didn't think it was great, by the way. I, I felt a little ashamed of myself sending it in because I felt like I was maybe kind of, you know, blowing a great opportunity. Really? But, yeah, I mean, but it, I think that's common with actors, yeah. I mean, and, and oftentimes, you know, you can prepare and prepare for weeks for these things, but what gets you cast more often than not is something intrinsic about you that's out of your control anyway. And so for whatever reason, they just went, I guess they went, that's our guy off of this tape. And, and it wasn't for a month or so. It, it took a little while. I'd sort of tried my best to put it out of my head. I would sort of wince every time I thought about it because... I didn't feel great about the work I had done. And then totally out of the blue, got an email that said, we have an offer for untitled Marvel project number four. I said, does anyone know what that is? And they said, right. No. Like, what is it like, is it the next Avengers movie? Like what, like, what are we filming? Right. And they were like, we have no information we can give. And I was like, where do I sign? Um, right. <laughs> so, when Marvel crosses, you can't say no, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. And, um, I also remember asking, you know, they said in that initial email for the audition, they said this tape may be used to consider you for other roles if you're open to that. And so I said, did I even get the part that I taped for? Or is this, um, the whole the whole thing was pretty, I was, I was in the dark for a great majority of the process. Did the recruitment, like the audition process take place before COVID, during COVID, or how did it work out? Yeah, it was... It, it was all months before COVID and then I ended up nice. shooting before COVID. Oh, nice. So this so, has been um, a long time in the works. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was the last big job I had before the shutdown. So then when did you uh, know officially it was like the Falcon and Winter Soldier when you got to set or? Uh, I got my official script pages a couple, maybe, you know, you usually get them pretty quickly after you get an offer and accept an offer. And I got the official script pages and I emailed that person back and I said, is there anything you can tell me about what this is? You know, just for my own research purposes, really. Um, and that's when that very nice person wrote back and said, this is a TV series called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, being directed by Kari Skoglund for Disney+. Plus." Um, and yeah, I, I'm very thankful that they filled me in. Yeah. Now with uh, Kari Skolan, she directed, as far as I know, like she directed every episode of this mm -hmm. uh, show. What was it like working with her? She's so amazing. I mean, I've worked with a lot of wonderful directors, but she, as far as I have seen so far in my career, she has the most extraordinary balance I've ever encountered of, on the one hand, knowing what she wants and knowing what works and being firm in her vision of something, 
but on the other hand, being completely open to other people's ideas or mistakes that are made in the moment. She's very, very open, but never in a way that we're never going to go completely off course. Do you know what I mean? And so she, it was really amazing to watch her go, oh, that shot isn't what I anticipated, but that's actually really beautiful. Let's do that shot. Or that there was one moment at the top of my sequence in the script, it said on a record player, Mel Torme's Coming Home Baby is playing. And, um, you know, if there's a song in the script, I'm going to go research that song and think about why it's there and all that kind of right. thing. And before we started rolling, I said to Kari, do we have the rights to this song? And she said, I don't know. What do you mean? And I said, what if he's mouthing the words or what if he's singing along a little bit? And she went, let me check and see if we have the rights because it would be pointless if we don't actually have the rights. Um, and she came back and she, she said, we have the rights, but I'm not sure about it. And I was like, I think it might be interesting. It might provide a little detail for him or a little fun texture. And she was not convinced, but to her credit went, yeah, just show me one. Let's see, let's see what it looks like. Why not try? And then we did one and she went, yes, I love it. That's exactly it collaboration there you go yeah and I'm, I'm I was really in awe of her and and trusted her on a really deep level and I think I don't want to speak for anybody else but I really think that was the general sense from everybody was she's a, she's a really really good team captain week to week we've been blown away by the script um, it's so strong and so powerful where we talk constantly every week so we are obsessed with geeks and we love the show. Um, but every week we're blown away by the themes of the scripts. So talk about when you got your script where some of the things you were blown away by. Well, what's really interesting is I only ever got my pages. And so I knew- I got Marvel, so secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I knew my corner of the story pretty well. And, you know, those actors told me another couple fun things that, you know, like I, I knew a couple things outside yeah, what they of have did already. I yeah, got, got it. Um, okay. But I've, you know, for ninety-five percent of the past five weeks, I've just been an audience member, and also really blown away by the the show is so satisfying on the level that you would anticipate, which is this huge action adventure, like two-hander kind of buddy comedy with huge event sequences, but I did not anticipate it would also be really satisfying from a character perspective, from a storytelling perspective. It's really clearly exploring incredibly relevant and important thematic issues, culturally, especially so right crazy, now. I, I think they had no idea what was going to happen within the next year, but that for them to be so relevant for today is, is insane. Yeah, but I also feel like these issues that it's tackling, it's not a good thing, but but they are issues that even if they weren't 100% relevant in this exact moment, these are issues that have been under the surface for a really long time. And yes, so- Not a doubt. And so I've, I've really been astonished at how it really does operate on both of those levels. You have- the big Marvel action adventure series that you would expect, which is phenomenal and so exciting and fulfilling, but it also has some real things to say. It has some real gravity. And, and to, to be a part of something like that, you know, the issues that it's talking about are really important to me as a citizen. And I'm, I'm so happy to be part of something that's really delving into it. In each episode, the script always seems to be asking like a central question. Like, how do we feel about this topic? How do we feel about this symbol? And there's such a well-defined theme, which Marvel does really well. Did Kari ever mention that when you were filming that this is our idea, this is our whole mantra going to this episode, this is the theme? Um, or how was that conveyed? I think there was a little bit of discussion about it. And I did, you know, I was able to sort of put together some puzzle pieces from what Kari said and what some of the other actors said. And, um, yeah, I, I was sort of scavenging for clues as much as I could. But, um, but you know, when I was on set, we were pretty focused on just that one sequence. And right. 
making that work as well as possible. I, it, I think that, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, and it's tough doing such good work when you have so few materials to work with. Did they give you like a character bio to tell you like, who is Dr. Nagel? What's his motivation and everything? Your character gets a good soliloquy about who he is. <laughs> so you're a little bit lucky, but did they give you other information besides that and to work with? You know, they said he was a character from the comics and that was enough for me to go do my own research. You know, he's not a huge presence in those comics. He is referred to here and there. I think he's only drawn one time. And so I, I had enough to go off on. And, you know, as soon as I saw the rendering in the comics and saw that he looks nothing like me at all, um, I felt like that sort of freed me up to do whatever I felt was right. It sort of made me realize, okay, we're, this Dr. Nagel is going to be his whole own creation. We don't have to answer to, we don't have to make it exactly what people know from the comics, if they know anything about him, really. He's a little bit obscure. And I knew enough about the MCU to know that the films and TV shows are not literal depictions of the exact comics. And so I felt like, like you said, I mean, that soliloquy, which is the perfect word for it, um, that soliloquy does provide so much backstory that I did really sort of think the script gave me pretty much everything I needed to know. Your impact, all the, I mean, you talked about being on set. The set was so beautiful, especially where your your scenes are filmed. I mean, it looked like, like in Marvel, you know, they're grand places, but talk about being on set and seeing all the set design and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it was really like stepping into a whole new world it's that set was so beautiful yeah, and has, I want to go there has, so bad <laughs> yeah I mean because you also never know that's not a thing you ever know before you set foot onto a set and right. I've been on other sets that have been well done in their own way but I've showed up and been like that's not at all what I thought my bedroom would look like or something like that and and so I didn't know envisioning Dr. Nagel knowing that he's a very sort of clandestine secretive person trying to hide in a lot of ways that lab could have been really small and dingy and a closet somewhere and um I remember walking onto it for the first time being like okay so that's not what we're doing this is a pretty this is a pretty grand um, place for him to work but but that's also so much of the fun is thinking about okay how does that inform the character what does it say about this character that this is where he operates out of and did he build all of it himself did he design it how did it, it it's uh, all of it is information and all of it can send you down these really fun exploration paths oh definitely and you got to work with so many of the greats. I mean, you got to work with the whole cast. So like the main essential cast. You got Anthony, you got Sebastian, um, Emily. Um, Daniel. Daniel. Uh, yeah, talk it's, about, it's crazy. You got, yeah. you got everyone. You got all the yeah. good ones. Yeah. And they, they treated me beautifully. I mean, you never know when you're just showing up for a couple of days what an atmosphere is going to be like, what a cast dynamic is going to be like. Yeah, especially when they've already been working together too. And I mean, they've been working together for a decade off and on. And sure. I would have understood if the vibe had been sort of like, this is our thing and it's cute that you're here, but you know, you're not really part of this. And it was the exact opposite. I mean, from the drop, they made me feel like I had been with them the whole decade, every single one of them. That's and that, one. yeah, it really is. I, I was really moved by it, <laughs> I remember, because, you know, it also, it enables everyone to do their best work, too, when they're comfortable and when they feel included. And, you know, we had a rehearsal day for this sequence, which is unheard of. I mean, usually rehearsal on a TV set or on a film set is five or 10 minutes before you start shooting and everyone's sort of like mumbling the lines going like, cool. And then I guess like, I'll go over there and then I'll say that like, it's not real rehearsal, at least the kind that you're used to if you've done a lot of theater, but we had a full like devoted rehearsal day to talk through the blocking of the sequence and try different ideas. And right off the bat in that rehearsal, 
Sebastian sort of whispered, he was like, if you have ideas, say them. Like you're just as much a part of this as anybody else. Wow. Is. Nice. And <laughs> And I don't know if he read on me that I was sort of like hanging back a little bit in those conversations or what, but I think like each of the four of them in their own way really did go out of their way to go, no, you're part of the gang now. So you can act like you're part of it. Part of the, part of the MCU family now. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah, awesome. it feels so lucky. Um, the show is... So, like you said, you've been watching week to week, mm -hmm. hanging on like like we have. Uh, tell us some of the the things that you loved about the show watching it week to week. I mean, the the two things that come to mind, the two specific things that come to mind, as opposed to the like general scope of it, which I'm in awe of. But I mean, that first fight sequence in the first episode with Anthony in the air. I, I, I think I watched it three or four times in a row because I sort of felt like I know how a lot of things get done. I have no clue how you even begin to do something like that. I thought that was unreal. Um, and then in this last episode, that Julia Louis-Dreyfus entrance is an exciting- Oh, oh all right, all right. Don't, get, don't get me started. That was <laughs> so epic. Mm -hmm. I mean- so every week we break down the episode. So now you, you'll have to join us for our breakdown now. I mean, <laughs> having Julia pop up, like, oh, chef's kiss. It was beautiful. Yeah. Like, it, she fit so perfectly in the role. I was like, I can't, like, how can I be more obsessed with the show? Julia's here. Like, we got Veep. We got, <laughs> exactly. uh, I mean. And I've, I've been re-watching all of Veep for the last month or so, oh, so yeah. just to have something on <laughs> at the end of the day that I know that I love with characters that I love. I watched it when it was on religiously, but oh, a yeah. month or so ago, I was like, it's time to go back and see all of it. And, you know, she I think she's one of those actors that everything she touches just turns to gold. And, so true. Very true. And I feel like, you know, the possibilities are endless with her in the MCU. Oh and yeah, I, she needs to be in everything now. She's gonna be yeah. popping up everywhere. And, and immediately I was like, how can Dr. Wilfred Nagel find his way <laughs> to her in in the past or in the past. Oh yeah, I think some, I think you have some strong flashback possibilities in your oh, future. Oh, for sure. I, would, I wouldn't know what to do with myself. That would, <laughs> that would be wild. Two, I, think you're, I think you're coming back season two. Listen, from your lips to Kevin Feige's ears. Right. I, I do feel like if anyone, he was, I mean, Dr. Nagel was shot and then his lab blew up, but I do feel like if anyone could have, you know, concocted some sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Plan or, or some kind yeah, of- Yeah, some, some sort of like shield mm, that reversal. you can preemptively take in the event of your untimely death. I do feel like that would be Dr. Wilfred Nagel. And so I have, I have hopes that, you know, if anyone could survive that, it would be him. I'd yeah, love to see you back too. Little serum on his own. Yeah, I mean that lab was big. He was probably doing a lot of different things in that lab. I, I don't think the serum was his only project. I'm I'm an authority on him. I think I can say that. Yes, you are an authority. Um, so Marvel has a lot of cool science bros who've done a lot of amazing. Was science a particular interest of you back in school? I mean, of course you're an actor, but like. Who knew you'd be playing a scientist? Yeah, and I've, I've played a few in my day. I've, I've worn a good amount of lab coats and stethoscopes and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I liked it. It was, I was much more of a like English and history nerd, um, but I did, yeah, I, I thought chemistry was really fun. I, I liked experiments. That was fun. I think your but, background um, kind of made you perfect for this role. Didn't you used to play a lot of mad geniuses on stage or am I wrong about that? I've played a couple. Yeah, I mean, I... You know, if you're an actor who can rattle off a lot of jargon and sound <laughs> like you know what you're talking about, there is there is work to be had for you. And um, I don't know that I'm always great at it, but a couple of times I have been able to do that okay. I hear you on that. I mean, so far with Nagel, you've been pretty good with that. So I assume the rest of it's been pretty good. <laughs> Thank uh, you. I've also had found another interesting thing between you and Nagel that's kind of interesting. Were you once one of on um, Finland's most wanted list? 
Is that a real thing? Yeah, it's 100% oh, yeah. Spill, <laughs> spill, spill, spill all the tea. You know, yeah, I read yeah, yeah. I read that and I was like, no way. Someone's playing a joke on this guy. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, yeah, me, me and Dr. Wilfred Nagel are both <laughs> fugitives from the law. Um, yeah, my, my parents are both Finnish citizens. And so I'm a dual citizen between Finland and the United States. And my dad <laughs> messed up the citizenship paperwork at one point in time. And it, when you're 18 in Finland, you have to serve in the army, I think for two years. And not that the Finnish army does more than like clean up parks and things, but you are expected to serve. And Finland didn't realize that I was primarily a United States citizen. Uh -huh. And so I was like the equivalent of a draft dodger in Finland. And this woman at the UN here in New York City was retiring and she was cleaning out her desk and she found this piece of paper and she was like I don't think I ever called them about this and she called my dad I was 20 years old she called my dad and was like this isn't a big deal it's very easy to take care of but until he does this paperwork he has like he is on the most wanted list and has been for two years and thank god he didn't try to travel internationally during this time and I did have to when I moved to New York, like a year or two later, I made an appearance at the Finnish consulate wow. where all I had to do was just like in person sign a couple papers. Um, but I walked in and I was like, hi, I'm Oli Haskavi. And they're like, we know who you are. Oh man. Like, what, what a missed opportunity. They should have just kept your character alive for a little bit longer and you can have your own tribunal scene like Walker did. You're made totally. for this role, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, maybe that was what tipped the scale. Maybe someone was doing some Googling and they were like, his audition tape was only okay, but he has some, he has some background experience that may be relevant. Made for the role. <laughs> and uh, you've played, is this also right that you played a character that's in the MCU today? Did you play Samuel L. Jackson off stage, on stage at some point? <laughs> I, I it, did, I did this, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. No, I was just curious, how does that work? Well, was, I heard it was for Jurassic Park with a Q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> in, the, in the Fringe Festival in New York City, which is, uh, you know, a sort of wild theater festival that used to happen every summer where a lot of amazing things came out of it. The musical You're in Town started there and really cool, strange things happened there. Um, my friend Marshall Paylette wrote this musical. The, the idea of it was that it was the story of Jurassic Park, but told from the perspective of the dinosaurs. And so it was sort of like, it was its own, what it was, was a script that was dumb and insane, but actors, the joke of it was sort of that these actors were doing it like it was Greek tragedy. Like it was actors taking this ludicrous story, pretending to be dinosaurs so seriously. And, um, and in one scene of it, because, you, because there were sort of, cameo moments for some of the characters that we recognize from the Jurassic Park film. Um, I did in one scene for one brief moment, play the role of Samuel L. Jackson. Your connections to the MCU, they just keep getting deeper and deeper. They need to bring you back for at least one flashback. I'll keep I, saying that. I'll advocate thank for you. you. I, I agree with all my heart. So let's, I will be crossing my fingers. Uh, Oli, so every week we love to predict um, what's going to happen on the next episode. You might have a little bit more intel, so give us your general predictions of what you think, this, how this is going to wrap up. I honestly, I don't have any intel at this point. And I also, I'm excited to be surprised. And I know that that is a little bit of a cop-out and I don't mean it to be, but I feel like the show has been so satisfying so far. Yeah. Obviously I am biased, but I think it has been, the twists and turns have been so surprising and satisfying that at this point in the series, I'm happy to just show up and see what happens. I mean, I think it could go 400,000 different ways. Yeah. And it's been pretty surprising so far. To and it has. It's, it's literally gone 400,000 different ways. But it it's... Yeah, so... Definitely I, not a I hope, It's been, yeah, it's been I, a I, great I, show. I Yeah, I, I, I feel weird saying thank you because I'm only responsible for that much of it. But um, 
I'm I'm hoping, but I I can almost guarantee that there will be a very satisfying and exciting conclusion. Well, listen, even being that much a part of it is so great. Like I always see you in a meme every day now, like Nagum Serum. So funny. Like. <laughs> Like I haven't the- seen them, so feel free to send them my way. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to tag you in a few of them. Like, please, you know, I would love that. Negum Serum's like a thing now. Like, you're wow. forever ingrained into the MT, which is super cool. It's wild. It's it's really not a thing I ever would have anticipated for myself, but I feel incredibly thankful and very lucky. And now to not piss off those friends, but who's your favorite Marvel superhero? I mean, I have been I don't know that she she counts as a superhero everyone in the universe is a superhero I've been a diehard Catherine Hahn fan for decades now interesting and so um so you know the the fact that she's in the universe I have an automatic bias towards Agatha as my it was Agatha all along <laughs> it was it really was we've been making predictions on wandavision as well on this podcast and for episode one we i think oj was the one who called us like this is going to be agatha's show from the very beginning so that was such an interesting I mean, <laughs> if you as as a longtime fan i know that if you put katherine Hahn in anything it is her show automatically absolutely Very true and so true. so so that that prediction was completely accurate well, you already talked about Catherine Hahn, but if there's any other actor in MCU you would love to work with, there's so many talented pool for you to pick, pick from. Oh my God. Who would it be? I mean, I feel like I have to say Stanley Tucci as the originator wow. of the serum. Oh. I'm, you have great I'm taste, so, <laughs> Thank I you know, so much. right? Um, wow. You know, I, I thought it was such a big deal and I was so excited when someone told me that I was sort of following in his footsteps. And... um. So yeah, I mean, if, if I could find my way to, you know, maybe some sort of scene where he's teaching me how it works or whatever. Um, cool. if, I mean, I would just pass him in a hallway and I'd be thrilled by it. But um, but yeah, I mean, to, to be mentioned in the same sentence as him is, you know, an honor of its own. And so that I think would would be really satisfying and exciting. I, I agree. Anything with feeling 2G is amazing. So I can I concur with this statement. Um, yeah. well, Ollie, thank you so much for joining us. We really thank take, you. Thank you for taking the time to sit with us and talk all things Marvel with us dorks. I'm so awesome. happy to. Literally it's anytime. It's good to yes, see you're such it, a huge fan too. You yeah. Know, normally <laughs> you're just a good actor, but you're an actor and a super big fan of your work. So it's awesome. Thank you. And then feel free to text us if you get that heads up from like, you know, season two's happening and <laughs> all this. I think I, I, I imagine I, you might know sooner than I would, but um, we'll Maybe. all just cross our fingers. Yes, we will. Cross to the Marvel gods, Feige, please. please. We need a season two. <laughs> please hook us up. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you. I really appreciate it. Thanks.